my YouTube, I'm filming this for a second time because I seem to just not plan videos um, and do not recommend that because then you waffle for 20 minutes and use up memory on your phone and then have to spend 20 minutes deleting songs that have no use on your phone um, just to refilm it with hopefully a little more concisity because I'm not gonna edit it um, yeah and also I should be studying but am I? no because spur of the moment thing um, also I do really want to get back into filming YouTube again um, I have some vlogs to edit like awful vlogs useless vlogs but yeah um, I think it's just something I can I can do um, outside of my degree so even if I get no views which like I'm gonna get no views it's something that's not law um, Anyway, so today I'm going to talk about managing your eating disorder recovery while also dealing with multiple chronic illnesses. Like, I have noticed that this is a theme um, among a lot of people recovering from eating disorders um, that a few years down the line, they <laughs> end up with chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia or they realise they have hypermobile elastonus or something um or any other chronic illness but they're the most common um i've come across like out of the people i follow on instagram that were eating disorder recovery accounts and now uh chronic illness accounts um that i've been following for like god knows how many years probably since i was like 16 <laughs> yeah okay so dealing with a chronic illness is hard dealing with eating disorder recovery is hard um managing both at the same time even harder a because when you're dealing with either getting a chronic illness or an increase in the severity of your chronic illness you end up having to become a lot less active um and even though I was exercising because I genuinely enjoyed it, I still used it as a justification, I guess, for eating junk food. So when that was taken away from me, um, and when I wasn't walking, however far it was to uni from my house last year, um, and back, um, <laughs> when I stopped that, I was suddenly like, oh my god I can't you know honor my cravings because I haven't moved um and also you spend a lot of time laying down in bed or at least I do because I get like headed when I sit up sitting up is quite painful unless I can move around a lot so sitting in lectures um sadly going to the theatre is getting just increasingly painful um and the third thing I guess there's four things. Um, the fourth thing will go for like loss of control um, because you lose, increasingly lose control and independence over your own body and over what you can do um, and freedom, I guess, to just do whatever you want. You come under a lot of scrutiny by people who supposedly care about you, um, people who are meant to care about you by society because you're suddenly in a position where doing anything is difficult, getting dressed is difficult, watching TV is difficult, cooking is difficult, doing your schoolwork, going to work is difficult, like everything is difficult um, and that's really hard in itself to deal with so naturally you would latch on to the coping mechanism or have urges to latch on to the coping mechanism that you had you know maybe two three four five years prior um even if you've been largely recovered um for a while it's not really unheard of to suddenly start dealing with it or experiencing issues again um and the final one is medication a lot of medications either if it says on the side effects list or not can cause weight gain um they can also cause weight loss 
This is either because of a compound in the medication itself that makes it easier to gain weight, um, or because they increase your appetite or decrease your appetite. Um, both are dangerous in eating disorder recovery. An increased appetite is difficult because it's you have to eat intuitively, um, I guess. You have to honour your hunger cues to maintain recovery, or at least I do. Like, I know if I justify restricting once, um, I'll be able to justify restricting more often and then I'll spiral down into relapsing. Um, and then appetite loss is difficult because you worry about losing weight or you don't worry about losing weight um but you do and then if you don't lose weight and you don't have an appetite you think if you suddenly get your appetite back you're gonna gain weight um and if you do lose weight that then triggers you to want to lose more weight which is ridiculous and it makes no sense but you know that's life okay so tips tips number one i have written a list this time number one is embrace yourself just you know learn to embrace yourself for who you are no matter what your size your weight your shape what you're able to do or not um you are absolutely wonderful and beautiful and perfect in every way um and you are so worth absolutely everything no matter what society tells you or what your friends and family think or random people on the internet um, and if your friends and family are commenting badly on your weight or your illness they really don't deserve to be in your life and I know it's like impossible to cut all toxic people out especially when they're members of your family but if people are commenting on your weight they and they're supposed to care about you they just need to be gone um, if at all possible and a good way to embrace you is to a learn about set point theory and intuitive eating and look into health at every size um this was especially important for me to keep my back the back of my mind or remember because like i'm technically clinically overweight um which fine i accept i understand and i can feel that i have extra fat on my body um and extra weight on my body which i possibly wouldn't have if I wasn't on all the medications and if I could still exercise like I was but also I've only just started having periods again um after being vegan and maybe not eating enough fat as a vegan and maybe giving in and believing freely maybe a little too much um and it did actually take me to get to this weight to do that again um i don't think it was just because it really damaged my body but i <laughs> have also been on and off birth control and period delay pills um over the last two years to try and manage my endo so despite like a significant time off of it like there was about a year where i was on nothing um where i still wasn't having periods like i think that delayed I'm coming back if that makes sense because the opportunity they had to come back kind of went <laughs> went out the window um so yeah that happened so maybe this is the weight my body wants to be um it's just learning that and rationalizing that in whatever way possible i would suggest like curating your instagram feed um or people you watch on youtube um i'll try and link some people down in the description at some point who i like to follow on instagram who are not super skinny and advocate for health and health at every size and just fill me with positivity and acceptance about my body and make me realise that I'm not actually that big and it's not a problem and it's not something I should be trying to change. Um, where else was I? I also suggest treating yourself. This is going to be a bit controversial because I know a lot of people with eating disorders struggle to go, go clove shopping. Um, but if you've gained a significant amount of weight 
find the clothes that fit you um, and suit you because even if we're the same clothes size ish um, as we were 10 kilos ago if our body shapes changed different clothes are gonna suit us we're not gonna look good in what we looked good in 10 20 kilos ago and um, that's just not how the fashion in industry works especially with female clothes I don't really know much about men's clothes but girls there are clothes out there that will suit you no matter what your size and again I think it's about trying to figure out what these styles are and and okay like going into a clothes shop first maybe isn't the best way to figure that out um you know looking at people on instagram with similar body sizes or larger body sizes and seeing what looks good on them is a good starting point seeing what you wish you could wear um and treating yourself to new clothes it doesn't have to be much it can be primark who have also messed up their clothing size system which i mean for the good actually because they've moved all their sizes down <laughs> So what was a small in Primark is now an extra small. So it makes you feel skinnier, it's good. Also some things are like way oversized. Um, so also good, because it makes you feel good about yourself when you can get into a four to six and you know, you know you're not actually that size, but you know. Don't shop at H&M um, unless you're buying tops or you find H&M does actually work with your body shape. It does not work with my body shape. I just can't can't deal with H&M jeans um yeah clothes you know are notorious for triggering like your eating disordered thoughts don't go into those shops um and don't try on items in those shops that you know have triggered you before because you don't need that at this time you don't need that at all uh at all at all at all um makeup's another good one to make you feel better about yourself make you feel more confident make you embrace yourself as yourself um no matter what your size um like i find on my worst well not on my worst chronic illness days because then i can't get out of bed but if i'm like borderline um sometimes i'm i'll put makeup on because it makes me feel better about myself or i'll wear heels because they make me feel better about myself and some feminists are probably gonna come at me now but oh well you know you do you if that involves wearing makeup and wearing heels that involves wearing makeup and wearing heels and i am not gonna get into a feminist round that's not what this is that is what my dissertation is kind of not but yeah too much competing feminism goes on in my dissertation Okay, where was I? I was somewhere. I was talking about getting rid of people who seem to comment um, and embracing yourself. So only only your doctor should care about your weight. Um, your doctor. If your doctor has a problem with your weight and thinks it's causing you health problems, then yes, stop eating intuitively. Um, or stop eating to your cravings and stop eating when you're hungry. I mean, don't. Because some doctors probably don't say the right things. But they are the only person qualified to tell you what to do. Um, and at this point, it's you need to remember as well that relapsing into your eating disorder is probably going to make your chronic illness worse. No matter what your chronic illness is relapsing into anorexia, bulimia, ethnos, or, or sped, whatever, whatever you have, you know, even if you have binge eating disorder, like, it's gonna make it worse. So think about your health, think about yourself, think about what's more important, I guess, you know, because you don't want to make things worse for yourself you don't you don't want to do that at this point in your life you don't want to do that at all um another thing that a lot of people with chronic illnesses experience i mean it depends on what they have but a lot of chronic illnesses either have comorbid dis 
comorbid conditions that are digestive or have digestive symptoms um so a lot of us get a lot of bloating which makes it so much fun to deal with like no matter what we eat um or whatever um and like nausea or inner reflux and all of that which can make it harder to eat so if you're in those situations where you're unable to eat a lot um calorie dense foods calorie dense foods liquid calories because the second you get that calorie deficit going it's going to be 10 times harder to stop like i know it with myself it's 10 times harder if you're comfortable enough and you're dealing with a lot of nausea loss of appetite reflux um try changing your diet if you haven't already which seems a bit controversial but i've literally <laughs> i'm in the process of going vegan again it's only been in the last week that i've realized that i wasn't necessarily nauseous and getting horrendous reflux um just because um that actually actually a lot of the food i was consuming was contributing to it so if you're comfortable enough and stable enough go ahead and experiment but nothing too restrictive and if you're going to do this keep a check on yourself don't go following um anything like don't go doing keto or raw till four which isn't even a thing anymore or starch solution um or fully raw or paleo or I don't know FODMAP mm -mm. I would be careful if you're gonna cut out FODMAP to help with IBS um, if you come from an eating disorder background it's definitely something I've never done because I look at it and it's too restrictive so if you're considering it definitely bring it up with a doctor you can trust um, and maybe see if you can find like a modified way to do it that isn't gonna be as triggering for you um same with like the endo diet is very restrictive at least for me being a vegan again um because i want to prioritize that for ethical reasons if i was to then cut out gluten um refined sugar and soya completely like that would be too restrictive so it's just about having a bit of common sense if you want to change your diet for health reasons like i recommend it because it can have benefits if you're struggling with appetite um, and not having an appetite and nausea or reflux um, and having an appetite makes it so much easier to eat because you're not having to force it in and you're not feeling 10 times worse for it so I would recommend it but I would recommend it within limits and I would recommend being very careful um, especially if you're going to do something quite radical and definitely don't do the really radical things um, and if you are going to do the really radical things, make sure you're being supported by medical professionals and um, people close to you who you can open up to and will know the warning signs if you start to slip. Um, yeah, so that is my video. Um, I will be trying to upload some vlogs that I filmed ages ago in the next few weeks. And yeah, just for you. You can get through this. You only get given as much as you can handle. I know that's hard to believe, but... At some point you will look back and realise how far you've come. Um, I still look back and realise how far I've come year on year and how much I've dealt with um, and how much I am dealing with because, you know, I couldn't have done that five years ago. So, or even last year. So, yeah. See you in my next video and I hope this is helpful.